All our lives, we've been building up skills that cater to other people. We build up our talents so that we offer other people an extension. An extension in the sense of how a narcissist perceives an extension. Sort of like becoming an arm for another person. In doing so, we sacrifice our own happiness and pursue the happiness of other people. It would have almost been a fair exchange if the other person was to reciprocate and offer us the same, but this almost always never occurs. As I was growing up, I would occasionally be asked when I was getting married. Other questions would then follow. Questions such as, have you saved up enough to get married? Can you afford to open up your own home? When people would ask this, they would mean whether or not I could afford to buy the furniture, white goods, etc. Pretty much everything that goes inside that house. And yes, it was always up to the man to come up with all the money to be spent on all these items. Why? Because I'm a man. But this is not pursuing one's own happiness. If anything, this is a man pursuing his own downfall. You, as a man, have invested everything. 100% of the material goods that belong in the house. Your partner has spent zero dollars. You forked out a financial commitment, an actual financial contribution, but your partner has contributed zilch. She has contributed nothing. But you're a man, right? It's your job, your duty, your obligation to become skilled in some way, shape or form to sharpen your talents as the protector provider to provide what you can for this female in order that she feels comfy and cozy in your home, right? It doesn't take long to realize that doing all of this was one of the biggest mistakes that you've committed in your life. You realize that you didn't pursue your own happiness, but you pursued someone else's happiness. If only it would end there, but it doesn't. You also realize that the same person that you tried to help and assist becomes your worst enemy and does their best to destroy you. What a great way to show appreciation after all the good things that you've done for that person. We could have been men with different skills had we realized the true nature of our counterparts at a much earlier time. We could have acquired different skills, pursued different routes to make a living, to pretty much live our lives our own way. We could have been going our own way a longer time ago. We all make mistakes, that's okay. We can do our best to pursue our own happiness, the sooner the better. We could have had zero debt way back rather than just in recent times after the realization of the gynocentric hub. Instead of buying that quick sports car seeking the approval of females, I could have just bought a simple ute that I could have used for work. Silly me. I even used that expensive sports car for work. I literally put my work tools in the boot of that car and yes, it became a pretty messy boot that I had to regularly maintain. Instead of having to work overtime so I could have more cash at my disposal, no, I had to work overtime because of the extra money that I had spent on purchasing that car. This is not only about buying vehicles, this is about something more than that. Did that car make me happy? No, not really. I ended up selling that car for a fraction of its price because I blew the engine. There are two resumes that one can write up. The differences between these two resumes are monumental. Imagine writing up a resume for what a female would want and seek from yourself. It doesn't take much to know what a female is pursuing. Most of the things that a female would be seeking from you would be material things. If you believe that a female is pursuing love and a long-term relationship, then you've got rocks in your head. And now imagine writing up a resume to yourself. Yes, a resume for yourself. What can you offer yourself? When you can do this, you can also expand on the things that you haven't got quite right yet, but are still hoping to achieve, whether they be skills that you want to acquire, a certain fitness level, monetary gain, a raised spiritual awareness, and so forth. The job that is being advertised to yourself will be taken. Yes, the person that is fit for the task is yourself. Why are you the best candidate? Because you know what you want to pursue. Also because you can control what happens to you as compared to a separate entity that will accept your resume for now and give you the job, but then throw you and your resume in the disposal bin as soon as some other candidate offers a new resume. You won't backstab yourself. You won't betray yourself. 
The other goodies that come with writing up your own resume for yourself is the thing that you know what you are after in life. You are also pleased with what you were chasing. You enjoy camping. You enjoy hunting. You want to build up your skills and learn how to survive in the extreme cold or scorching heat. You've learned how to extract water from a gum tree just in case a situation arises where you are in need of water. How appealing is this to you? Well, for you it's something that you desire. It's written on your resume. When you read it, it puts a smile on your face. You appreciate yourself. But this being written on your resume, but being read by somebody else, specifically a potential female partner, will be laughed at. Why should I go on such a mission to extract water, they say. Not thinking about the actual activity and the enjoyment of just being outdoors and knowing that if such a task needed to take place because of an emergency, you will fulfill that task. The other person doesn't appreciate this, but to you, this puts a huge smile on your face. What do you like? You know what you want in life. There's no guesswork involved. Have a cup of coffee over it. If you need more time, take your time. There's no one around you that's going to threaten you via telling you that you need to put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. <laughs> what a joke. A ring can come off a woman's finger faster than it can be put on. I might actually add skydiving to one of my not so distant goals. This may go down on my resume as one of my ambitions or future objectives. Do you think that the person in charge of recruiting workers is going to be pissed if he or she realizes that I'm a daring person? I know I'm not going to be pissed. After all, it's directed at me. It's about me. I remember once I was being abused by my ex. It was towards the end of our relationship. I slowly started to stand up for myself. It was evening and she was yelling and screaming at me because she couldn't go out due to the fact that her car wouldn't start, demanding that I fix her car effective immediately. Did I know what was wrong with her car? Yes, I did. It was either the starter motor, the alternator or her car battery. I was only a mechanic for one year before I left and worked in the building industry. I appreciate the little amount of skills that I learned from working in a mechanical workshop, but my ex-partner did not, and neither will any person that you hand your resume over to. Personally, I believe that if we as men were to write down the talents, skills and experiences that we have and make a resume out of them, we will even surprise ourselves. We are capable of a lot more than what we generally think. But you hand over that resume to a female? they will not appreciate it. Why? Because they will only be looking for immediate resources. Picture a scale before your eyes that could compare your skills against the female skills. It would be surprising if their resume was even recognized on that scale. When us men realize our own self-worth, we will respect our own selves more. Realization of self-worth will cause us to critically compare what others have to offer back to us and whether it's a fair exchange. Write up a resume to yourself, yes, for yourself, and yes, you've already got the job.